Welcome, Dr. Franklin Colbert, Cedar Rapids Gazette. Um, the changing nature of college athletics that President Nook uh, mentioned in his comments, what would you tell the most passionate, educated Panthers fans about their serious and fair concerns about the demand for fundraising in this era? Absolutely. You know, I think what is important is that it is going to mean that we have engagement from our fans and alumni and our donors in helping us navigate this time in college athletics. Uh, it's exciting and it also offers opportunities for engagement. Again, thinking through the legacy pieces of different interests people have and when they want to give. And that's nice. They have a full menu for sure these days. Um, and that it isn't like sometimes it used to be where it was scholarships and facilities. You know, and now we have more diversity in what opportunities they can engage in what they're interested in doing. So um, we also want to make sure that we're defining what we're doing and so that people really understand our targets and what we're after and what we're wanting to do to accomplish what we're doing. Ethan Dietrich, Waterloo, Cedar Falls Courier. Welcome to Cedar Falls. Uh, when going through the interview process, what concept, what idea of support from the university side of things do you get would be there for the athletic department when you took over? Thank you. Well, you know, as I was been talking to President Nook about as a potential candidate what you're looking at, and I think for me, watching the, the commitment to the facilities, that is important. Uh, and so that is a sign from both the president and the board that they're willing to uh, invest in that way and commit to the support in that way. So uh, that is an exciting news story that I noted as well as I was as coming in. And then in talking with the president through the interview process and with you know, senior leadership team, one, they really understand that athletics is integral to the mission of the institution. And so really knowing that when we're thriving, we're all thriving together. What do you feel is your chief responsibility in this role? My chief responsibility is to support the coaches, student athlete, and staff to be their best self. Really understanding what it is that they need, how I can be a resource, and if there are roadblocks and challenges they're facing, what is that? So it's really so relationship driven, but it's all about helping other people thrive. What would you point to that you think will be most productive about uh, Bob Fulton's presence as an interim athletic director and what I would imagine your ability to really start in a way and a manner in which he would as a result of his presence? Right. Well, that was another exciting announcement for sure. When, when that announcement happened, I really thought that was another signal of the university's seriousness about athletics. Uh, continuing momentum and moving through an interim process. And so, as I said earlier today in a meeting, that, that he has brought con really wonderful engagement and momentum across the institution, the community, and our you know, donors and fans. And uh, I want to just grab that baton and, and keys <laughs> and uh, get to work and following his wonderful footsteps. That's right. So some of the questions that I was considering, you know, that wanting to hear from. Oh, yes. Audience, yeah. So the question was, what probing and <laughs> fascinating questions did I ask um, President Nook in the interview process? Uh, and so, you know, for me, it was important to hear about the focus and the what did he see? What does he see as you know the goals for athletics? How does he see athletics integrated into the mission of the institution? 
um, you know, what leadership opportunities do I have? Again, I'm on the senior leadership team, which I'm very, you know, which is, an, is not like that everywhere. And so the opportunity for engagement with the senior leadership team at the university as well. Uh, and so being able to just get a little bit of understanding of his thinking um, on different levels of the university, I wanted to hear. But she did say she wanted the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of leader do you strive to be and what tops your priority list as a leader at UNI? I like to be a leader that hires experts in the field. You know, that they come to me with solutions and then they're, they're as driven or more driven than me. Uh, I like to hear creativity and you know, problem solving. Uh, I also make sure that uh, we're leading with love and uh, motivating through, through love and, uh, and we're having a good time. So, um, but I do like to hear from, you know, the experts in the field. So winning coaches who have, you know, like to problem solve in this era, we need that creativity and um, strategic mind. Welcome Dr. Franklin, Mark Simpson with uh, 1650 The Fan Radio. My question is, what attracted you the most about coming to the University of Northern Iowa? I keep going back to this, but really the people. When they're, over the 12 years I've been at Drake, we have been able to look to you know, really wonderful leaders at the University of Northern Iowa across sports and across administration. And um, so I've known the, the family, I would say, here for a long time. And so when you know that you're going to be coming into a family atmosphere, that is a great way to start. And I also know quite a bit of pe quite a few people, so they, they, they know my heart as well. And so I like to win, I like to be competitive, and I like to do it the right way. And uh, I know I can help support that here. You've spoken on your experience and some of the projects you've been a part of. I'm curious what you're most proud of, what projects are you most proud of in your career, be it from Drake, Virginia Tech, even early in your career as an athletic trainer. What, what, what project have you been a part of yeah. that you're most proud of? You know, I think you'll always, what you always want to talk about is graduation, you know, and I think that is, that's always a starting point. When you see student athletes graduating and in the students I talked about earlier graduating, uh, that's a really special moment. Um, you know it is in their lives and you know what they've been through, especially now when we've been through COVID and what these student athletes have persevered through, that's a really, that's been a really tough time. And so those are really special graduations to, to go there. And I think too, when you see the championships and when you, winning is a culmination of a whole lot of hard work and a lot of, you know, staff and, you know, everyone who's worked around the programs. When you get to, when you get to cut down the nets, that's a pretty special moment. So it, really it's not about me in a project. It's usually celebrating the work that's gone together to see the culmination of a lot of work of a lot of people uh, that have found that day. Hello, Dr. Frank, uh, Darren Swenson, uh, Radio Iowa. You look at the coaching staff that you alluded to a few times, and it's uh, unprecedented uh, for this level of seniority on this uh, staff. Uh, you look at football, men's basketball, wrestling, uh, women's basketball, volleyball. How did that maybe help attract you to this position, and does that create some uh, challenges going, knowing the fact that a lot of these people have been around here a long time? Well, one fun thing I want to mention is Doug Schwab and I worked together at Virginia Tech. We were, he was on staff when I was on staff, and uh, Tom Brands was the head coach, and then Kevin Dresser came after that. So I've gotten to work with all three of them um, during my years at Virginia Tech. Uh, so what I would say is it's very exciting. Um, what I have found in these conversations through the interview process and through my early time here is that they are all hungry. So regardless of the years, regardless of what that win and loss record says, which has a lot of good things to say, they're still hungry. They want to know what is that legacy going to be and how are we going to continue to grow that. So what I like about it is they're still hungry. Um, there's no one's, you know, resting on their laurels. And, um, and so that's what's exciting about it to me is that, boy, what a wonderful group to work with and um, to learn from in leadership while also supporting what they want to do in this next era. 
all right so at this time we're going to rearrange the furniture a little bit we're going to invite the media to come up we're going to take some photos and then if any of you